Star Trek The Next Generation for the Super Nintendo? Man, what a dork. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in here? Oh my god, is that Madden 97 in the box? What are you doing, just collecting shitty games? <laughs> oh my god, you have a copy of DuckTales! Finally, a good one. I'm gonna borrow this. You still haven't answered my question, Rob. What are you doing here? Well, I'm just working on the next top 10 Tales facts list for uh, this game right here. Ah, another non Nintendo product, I see. Oh, come on, Rob. It's for our Tales videos. You know how much our fan base likes them. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. I just stopped paying attention after the Symphonia one. Well, if I'm boring you that much, you're free to go. No, no, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't get all butt hurt on me. Is the script done? Well, um. Yeah, it's pretty much done. Well, great. Let's go. Wait, what? Yeah, home sweet home. Wake up, Chunky. Mega Man X2 was released in the year 1990. Why are you here? Ah! Hey there, everybody! Welcome back to the Brotherhood of Gaming. I'm your host, William Morris. And I'm your co-host, Eugene Morris, and now we come to Tales of Legendia, or Legendia, whatever. You know, I admit, this game, as far as the Tales series goes, it's one of the, it's considered to be one of the lesser entries. Um, now, I do recognize that there are better Tales games in the series, but I'm just very sentimental over this game. Uh, in fact, this is the only Tales game that I have beaten that Will hasn't. I mean, he is right. I do have better games to play. So, yeah. Objectively, there are better Tales games out there, but subjectively, this is one of my personal favorite Tales games. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's get down to business and check out what interesting facts there could possibly be for this unique entry in the Tales of series. This is the BrotherhoodGaming.com, and these are the top 10 facts about Tales of Legendia, Legendia, Le Legendia, Le Legend, Legends. Number 10. Many of its developers came from the Tekken and Soul Calibur series. To many Tales fans, Tales of Legendia is often considered the black sheep of the series. The red-headed stepchild, as it were. Well, that is mainly because it was a Tales game that was not fully developed by the traditional Namco Tales studio. Instead, the game's development team was called Project Melfus. Tales fans first heard of Project Melfus thanks to a special DVD that appeared with Tales of Rebirth that gave a special sneak peek trailer for Legendia. In fact, some people thought this was going to be the game's title, Tales of Melfus. Apparently, Namco felt that in order to keep up with demands, not one, but two development studios were needed. So they created Project Melfus, which consisted of members of Tales Studio and developers from the Tekken and Soul Calibur series as well. Meanwhile, the main Namco Tales Studio were working on Tales of the Abyss. Legendia was released in August of 2005 in Japan, while Abyss came out in December later that year. In the end, Legendia would be the only Tales game to be made by this development team. Number 9. It was the first main title to have a non-swordsman in the lead role. Another way that this game stands out from other Tales games is with its main protagonist, Seno Coolidge, or Seni as Norma would call him. Coolidge is a former Marine who is on the run with his sister, quote unquote, Shirley. Once making it to the Legacy, a giant island sized ship in the middle of the ocean where the game takes place, Shirley gets kidnapped, so Seno embarks on a mission to rescue her with comrades he meets along the way. What makes him so different is that he is a hand-to-hand -hand combat fighter. Now that alone does not make him unique, as there are others in this series, but here Senel is in the lead role. Senel battles with a combination of martial arts and grappling attacks, which are called throw errors. 
Typically, it is a swordsman that gets to be in the lead. Also note, the typical tale of swordsman attacks and equipment goes to Chloe Valens. There is a strong hint at a romance between Sennel and Shirley. Now, Shirley is not actually his real sister. They just live together along with her big sister Stella, posing as a family. Anyway, the game remains ambiguous as to who Sennel ends up with. Either Shirley or Chloe, as it does appear that he has romantic feelings for both. Number 8. There is no music from Matoi Sakuraba. And the hits just keep coming. Another way this game stands out from the rest is that this game does not feature any music composed from the main man himself, Matoi Sakuraba. I know, shocking, right? Instead, musical duties went to Goshina. When he was brought on board to write songs for Tales of Legendia, he at first tried to emulate the musical style of Matoi Sakuraba, but later on, he was inspired to develop his own style for this game. His musical style usually consists of dramatic melodies and unusual arrangements containing a range of different styles. These range from the likes of jazz, orchestra, and rock, and various others. He would mix them together to give some unique sounds, and was one of Namco's mainstays before retiring from them in September of 2017. However, there was no drop off in quality. The game's music is often regarded as not only a high point for this game, but for the series in general. In fact, samples of this game's music has been featured in many video game concerts that have taken place all over the world. So yeah, suck it haters. Number 7. It contains references to classic Namco games. Despite all of the changes, there were still quite a bit of Tales traditions that still managed to find its way into Legendia. One tradition is its references to other Namco titles, many of them coming from its rich arcade days. For starters, The Wonder Baker, the game's version of The Wonder Chef, makes several of them. One of the objects that she hides in is a statue of one of Namco's main mascots, Pac-Man. A second is a flag from Rally X, and another is a drum from Tycho Drum Master. One of the monsters that you can fight is a special type of dragon called a... whatever that is. This is a monster that came from the Tower of Juraga series. Also, Will Renard can receive the Haihashi title. Gee, I wonder where that's from. But the coolest has to go to Chloe. One of her titles is Soul Edge. This is a reference to the evil sword from the Soul Calibur series. Anyway, it's always nice to remember where you came from. Number 6. The game has two completely different quests. Another way that Tales of Legendia tried to stand out from other Tales titles, and many Japanese RPGs in general, is that this game has not one, but two quests. This has helped add to its length, which adds up to around 80 hours of gameplay. Jesus Christ. The first quest in the game is the main quest, or main scenario. This is your typical save the world kind of story which is the run of the mill for many of the genre. When the world is saved and high fives are exchanged, the credits will roll and the big dramatic song will play. Normally, this is usually the end for any RPG, but not for Legendia, as a second quest will begin right afterwards called Character Quests. This section's main goal is to expand upon the character development for the supporting cast. It explores the past and problems that the group faced and still faces while still having an overarching storyline that ties them all together. So at the very least, the game gives you as much gameplay as it can. Speaking of the gameplay... Number 5. The LMBS was a throwback to earlier titles. Like every other Tales game in the series, Tales of Legendia uses the linear motion battle system for its combat. Here it is called the crossover linear motion battle system, where the 3D rendered characters move back and forth along a 2D plane, similar to the very first games in the series. While the action still feels like a fighting game, many see this game's LMBS as a step backwards. Reason being, as there is no real major innovations that was made for this entry, especially when compared to games like Rebirth and Symphonia. The game uses randomized battles as your character travels throughout the world map. 
You engage in normal attacks, chain combos, and can also incorporate special skills, which are called errors. These are activated by using the tech points, aka TP. There is also no Hayugis in this game either. Instead, you have a climax gauge. When filled all the way, the screen freezes and you can execute a team attack. And there is the normal leveling up with experience points, and the new addition of air stones, which can be used to purchase more items. But one unfortunate thing that was left out of this game was the fact that this game has no multiplayer. So this game is single player only. Which is fine if you have no friends, but if you wanted some help, then when it comes to Legendia, sorry, but you're on your own in this case. Number 4. The names of the protagonists come from classic literature. Much like how Tales of Eternia derived many of its names from astronomy, Tales of Legendia did something similar when it comes to naming its lead protagonists. Here, the game used inspirations from literature. For Senel Coolidge, he is named after Cuban writer Senel Paz. Shirley Finesse got her name from the 1849 novel entitled Shirley, which was written by English novelist Charlotte Bront. Swordsman Chloe Valens was named after the character from the 1947 novel Froth on the Daydream. William Renard is named after, well, who else? The great William Shakespeare. Treasure hunter Norma Betty got her first name from American author Norma Field, while Moses Sander was named after Romanian writer Moses Gaster. And finally, Jay was named after another American author named Jay McGinry. The only one not named after a writer or book is the character Grun, which is based on the German word for green. We are not sure why the team went with this for the inspirations for the characters' names, but it's still pretty cute nonetheless. Number three, the game's skits were mostly English voiced. While Legendia may be lacking in a few areas here and there when compared to other games in the series, it did go the extra mile when it comes to its game's skits. These very short conversations between characters have always been very important to the Tales games in general. They allow for more character development between the cast. Here, the game skits functions pretty similar to the chats that appear in Tales of Destiny 2 and Tales of Rebirth, meaning they show full portraits of the characters talking instead of just a face in a box. A big difference for Legendia is that the skits were mostly revolve around player achievements. For example, if one of your characters learns a new errors or manages to forge a brand new weapon, you'll see one of these skits. But the big thing here is that Tales of Legendia had its skits fully English voiced. Well, at least in the first quest. The character quests, well, not so much. But this was a first for its English localization to have such a large number of the skits get English dubbed. As beforehand, we English-speaking folks had a lot of text reading to do when it came to these skits moments. Number two, the characters were designed by Kazuto Nakazawa. While Legendia continued to use production IG to develop its animated cutscenes, there was a new helmer when it came to the character designs. For this edition, it was anime illustrator Kazuto Nakazawa. Born in 1968, Kazuto became a character designer and director of many anime series and video games. As a director, his work included Parasite Dolls and the anime sequence that appeared in Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill Volume 1. As an animator, he has worked on such anime as Ashita no Naja, and even Samurai Champloo. He also worked on the anime anthology series The Animatrix, and the Linkin Park music video for Breaking the Habit. Admittedly, it is a little strange that Tails Normal, Matsumi Inamata, who has handled the majority of the character design work and artwork, was not tapped in to work on this. But Kazuto Nakazawa was more than qualified to take over, as Legendia's characters are just as nice to look at as other characters in the series. And number one, the game received mixed reviews in North America. With all the changes that were made during the making of this game, it is easy to speculate that Tales of Legendia was kind of an experiment for Namco. The question is, did it end up working? Well, in Japan, the game was, for the most part, received pretty well. It received mostly positive scores, and at the end of 2005, it sold up to 342,779 copies. This would rank it as the 30th best-selling game of that year. However, in North America, it was a bit of a different story. The reviews were mediocre and average. While the music and battle system were generally praised, the story and AI were mostly criticized. It has often been seen as a lower-tier RPG with a great soundtrack. Many fans of the Tales series also did not hold this game in high regard either, as some have called it a mere shell of other Tales games. 
Despite that, however, the game does have its fans, and its lead protagonists Seno and Chloe have made numerous guest appearances in other Tales titles, like the Radiant Mythology series, Twin Brave, and so on. So while Tales of Legendia may not rank as one of the shining examples of the Tales series, it is still a game that has managed to find its own audience, and should be respected for it. And that's our list. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. And don't forget to click that bell down at the bottom to become part of our notification squad so that way whenever we release a new video, you guys will be the first to hear about it and you'll be ready to watch it and all of that cool stuff. Meanwhile, I got better things to do, better games to play, so I'm going to put this crap down and play Mega Man X2. Where is it? Oh.